dysuria, bladder pain, and interstitial cystitis or bladder pain syndrome by senior care conception. Dysuria and bladder pain are two symptoms that commonly call attention to the lower urinary tract. Dysuria is defined as pain that occurs during urination. It may be burning or stinging. It is caused by a number of diseases or disorders, and the other symptoms associated with the dysuria help diagnose the cause. Dysuria is more common in women, with half of women experiencing dysuria in their lifetime. Routine evaluation includes urine dipstick and culture, as well as pelvic examination. There are two broad groups of causes of dysuria in women. First is your bacterial cystitis, which is a lower urinary tract infection, and lower genital tract infections, which includes vaginitis, urethritis, and ulcerative lesions. Bacterial cystitis is commonly caused by E. coli and other gram-negative rods, as well as your Staphylococcus saprophyticus. It presents as acute dysuria with urinary frequency and urgency and suprapubic pain and or hematuria. Lower genital tract infections are caused by sexually transmitted organisms and occurs more in women with new or multiple sexual partners, especially without condom use. It presents as gradual dysuria, less commonly associated with urinary frequency, urgency, and suprapubic pain and hematuria. Under lower genital tract infection are vaginitis, which presents with vaginal discharge and irritation and is usually caused by Candida albicans and Trichomonas vaginalis. Urethritis is usually caused by Chlamydia trachomatis and Dysseria gonorrhea. Causes for ulcerative lesions include your herpes simplex virus and other STIs. In men, Dysuria is less common and it occurs with or without your penile and perineal pain. Routine lab tests include urinalysis and urine culture. Etiologies of dysuria in men usually affect either the prostate or the urethra. Bacterial prostatitis is the infection of the prostate gland commonly caused by E. coli and other gram-negative rods. The prostate is a source of infection and it has two presentations. Acute presentation has dysuria with fever and chills. When doing a prostate examination, it is important to be gentle as to not trigger the spread of infection. Chronic presentation is a recurrent bacterial cystitis, and the prostate fluid shows bacteria and leukocytes. Benign prostatic hyperplasia is an outflow obstruction, presenting as weak stream, hesitancy, and dribbling. And then due to the retention of your urine, it may also develop your cystitis on top of the benign prostatic hyperplasia. STI urethritis is caused by either Chlamydia trachomatis, Neisseria gonorrhea, Mycoplasma genitalium, Uriplasma urolyticum, Trichomonas vaginalis, or Herpes simplex virus. It does not produce urinary frequency but has urethral discharges. Other causes in both men and women are divided into acute or chronic. For acute causes, it includes lower urinary tract stones, trauma, and urethral exposure to topical chemicals. Chronic causes include malignancy, medications, and Bichette syndrome and reactive arthritis. Bladder pain is defined as suprapubic pain that alters bladder volume and may be associated with other urinary symptoms. The following are the acute and chronic causes. A disorder that presents as bladder pain that is worth discussing is the interstitial cystitis or also known as the bladder pain syndrome. The American Urological Association defines it as an unpleasant sensation, either pain, pressure, or discomfort perceived to be related to the urinary bladder associated with lower urinary tract symptoms for at least six weeks in the absence of infection and other identifiable causes. Many patients with ICBPS have other symptoms such as fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, and irritable bowel syndrome 
collectively known as your functional somatic syndromes or FSS. Pain and fatigue are the common features of these conditions with normal laboratory tests and histological findings. ICBPS affects more females than males with an onset age of around 40 years old and it commonly affects individuals with other FSS syndromes. It presents as chronic condition of urinary bladder pain, urinary frequency and urgency, and nocturia. Symptoms are variable and in 10% of cases associated with a Hunter lesion, which is a single ulcer on cytoscopy. Hypothesis for the possible causes of ICBPS include chronic bladder infection, autoimmunity, defective epithelium, and abnormal pain sensitivity. It is diagnosed based on its symptoms with pain, pressure, or discomfort anterior or posterior at the level between the umbilicus and upper thighs. It must exclude other possible causes with pelvic examination in women, serum prostate-specific antigen assay in men, and urinary cytology. Cystoscopy is another laboratory test used in detecting the Hunter lesion but is not routinely done. Differential diagnoses are categorized into three. First is your bladder and urinary pain symptoms such as an overactive bladder and endometriosis. Second is your other functional somatic syndromes. And lastly is your referral pain such as your vulvodynia and chronic urethral syndrome. Treatment for ICBPS is symptom-based and it employs many strategies but begins with the conservative options. Aside from the ones discussed in this video, you can use these resources to learn more about ICBPS treatment. Link in the description. Diagnosis and education is part of treatment. Many patients are suffering from ICBPS for a long time. And having a diagnosis is beneficial to address the burden of multiple doctor visits and the frustration on the patient's side. Stress reduction is a strategy done as like in other FSS, stress aggravates the symptoms of ICBPS. Yoga and meditation are practices done under this strategy. The next strategy is dietary changes. Patients identify certain foods such as chilies, chocolate, citrus, tomato, alcohol, and caffeine and carbonated drinks that can trigger or aggravate their symptoms. It is best to avoid or minimize intake of these foods. As bladder volume may affect the symptoms, experimenting with fluid intake may also be beneficial to determine the amount of water intake that would reduce your symptoms. Physical therapy with a goal of pelvic floor relaxation weekly helps manage the pain in the pelvic floor associated with ICBPS. Medications can also be used. Ampitriptyline, which helps manage your symptoms, can be given as well as your pentosan polysulfate which replenishes defective glycoaminoglycan layer in the bladder mucosa. These drugs have side effects and their benefits and risk must be assessed with the patient prior to prescription. Invasive treatment options are also available such as your cystoscopy bladder distension, fulguration of your Hunter lesion, lidocaine, hyaluronic acid, and dimethyl sulfoxide, anticonvulsants, Narcotics and cyclosporine medications can be given. Sacral neuromodulation can be used for the pain. Cystoplasty, cystectomy, and urinary diversion are the extreme measures. Like the medications, it is important to discuss to the patient the pros and cons of these treatment options. ICBPS affects the lives of the patients greatly. Since the natural history of ICBPS is still unknown, the progression of the disorder might not be as clear versus other disorders. Some patients may also have ICBPS in the entire course of their lifetime, and it seriously affects the quality of life of these individuals. It is important 
to educate the patient and assist them as best as medical professionals can to alleviate the burden of the disease. Here is my reference. Thank you and please subscribe to my channel.